You are allowed to like the Drake Corsair. You are allowed to enjoy its asymmetry, its cute picnic table, its private crew quarters, its rooftop elevator, its proportions. It's all pretty charming. CIG's idea behind the Drake Corsair is good. CIG's design is bad. For a Drake-styled, multi-mission-capable spaceship, the Corsair's mechanical designs let it down. Ironically, if CIG let the landing gear down further, the Corsair's mechanics would improve. The landing gear is too short. Planetary landings are difficult and restricted to the same smoother or prepared areas relied on by the rest of the manufacturers. Drake ship designs are supposed to be rugged, reliable, and rudimentary and should be more capable of landing on rougher, unprepared, or improvised landing zones closer to the objectives and points of interest. The Corsair needs taller landing gear. Conventional and VTOL aircraft designed to operate from rough, unprepared, or improvised landing zones exhibit either top-mounted wing and engine assemblies, like a C-130, tall tricycle landing gear, like Su-25s and carrier-borne naval craft, and often also chin-mounted armaments, like Mi-24 Heinz and the Concept V-22 Ospreys. These features keep the aircraft's wings, engines, or the entire fuselage away from uneven terrain or allow the aircraft to land harshly on shorter or rougher landing zones. Chin-mounted armaments allow aircraft to clear and cover landing zones for their ground crew complements. Our rugged, reliable, and rudimentary ground crew complemented planetary exploration ship ought to exhibit one of these features. It exhibits none. The engines and wings are mid-mounted and sit low to the ground. The landing gear is too short, and because the landing gear is too short, the ship cannot fit a chin-mounted turret or utility hardpoint. Of these three deficiencies, the first isn't worth the reinvestment. The latter two, however, are simple fixes. I presume the Corsair's short landing gear accommodates the fixed-length cargo ramp. Taller landing gear might produce cargo ramps too steep to operate from, but that's an easy fix. Install an extending portion on the ramp and allow players manual control of the ramp angle and extension length. This also fixes cargo ramps acting as unwanted hydraulic lifts. With taller landing gear, the Corsair can exhibit a chin mount underneath the co-pilot space, which itself is chin mounted, just like the Corsair's original concept art. You've heard my take on chin mounted turrets before. The Corsair would benefit even more from a chin mounted hardpoint here. The Corsair's co-pilot space is unrealized. The co-pilot chair lets you down physically, but the co-pilot space lets you down emotionally. It's a separate, isolated, and dedicated space without a reason for any of those qualities. The space is separate, but with no ability to explore and utilize the separate space. The space is isolated, but with no known, articulated, or forthcoming protections against gravity, oxygen, fire, or boarding threats afforded by an isolated space. And the space is dedicated, but without a dedicated function or design. The co-pilot's downward-facing space on the Corsair implies two functions, planetary gunnery support and planetary resource scanning. There are developer comments to suggest both. Scanning mechanics should be improved with forthcoming UI, MobiGlass, and star map updates. There are ISC episodes suggesting that might be sooner than we think. I've made my case for co-pilot weaponry controls before. The lower cheek mounts here should gimbal low enough to cover ground crews, but they currently don't. A chin mount would be better, as we saw in the Corsair's initial renderings. Both of these corrections would help to realize the Corsair's co-pilot space. But additional utility, perhaps a small tractor beam mount like the Cutlass is supposed to see in the front. Official CAG video. That's where the screenshot comes from. Tractor beam locations. Boom. Boom. Or a small salvage function for basic ship-to-ship -ship repairs, 
fits the Corsair's multi-mission design language and should be considered for the co-pilot space further. I'll also hold out hope that the engineering gameplay updates recognize the co-pilot space as a separate ship zone isolated from oxygen, fire, and boarding threats. We have an entire history of aircraft with turret designs that either prioritize top, bottom, and rear coverages over lateral mounts or outright omit lateral mounts entirely. Twinned or heavier armaments on top, bottom, and rear turrets, and single or lighter armaments on lateral turrets, if any at all. The Drake Corsair design stands as an antithesis, one lightly armed top turret and two heavily armed lateral turrets. The Corsair's turret design is all wrong. Their viewing angles are all blocked by the wings. The top turret aims backwards but doesn't cover the vulnerable 6 o'clock position or the cargo bay. The lateral turrets don't even cover entire hemispheres, and none of them coordinate with the pilot's gun solutions. All of which means the Corsair exhibits difficulty trying to defend itself, especially when trying to escape pursuing hostiles or during cargo loading operations. The Corsair's vulnerabilities are due to bad design, and bad design leads to ineffective mechanics that lead to frustrated players who aren't equipped with the right tools for the job. I'm unsure why this turret design was chosen, but a solution is easy. Asymmetrically opposed top bottom mounted turrets and a proper rear hemisphere turret at the back. Also, the wing weapons ought to be mounted further out on the wing tips. Bigger, slower, and less maneuverable ships can't achieve gun solutions very well on their own. They especially benefit from turreted and gimbaled weaponry. Gimbaled weaponry benefit from wider spacing. Moving the wing-mounted weapons to the wingtips would widen the gimbal coverages and thus offer a wider range of gun solutions compensating for the Corsair's relative sluggishness. It also allow you to shoot over things when the wings are folded up. The problems associated with the Corsair's short landing gear are solved with an extendable and manually adjustable cargo ramp, and that's a feature plenty of other ships in Star Citizen would greatly benefit from. The disappointment associated with the Corsair's unrealized co-pilot space is solvable with forthcoming Building Blocks UI-based investments and engineering gameplay content too. Investments that other unrealized co-pilot spaces and other ships would greatly benefit from. The terrible turret coverages are solvable too by following the principle laid out by a century of aircraft design, a principle other CIG turret designs would benefit from too. The missed opportunities present in the wing weapon placements are recoverable by pushing them outwards, a fix greatly enhanced whenever co-pilots received gimbaled weaponry controls. All four of the Corsair's bad design examples are also examples of other design flaws in other CIG ships, too. The Freelancer, a four-man crewed cargo vessel, has a terribly placed man turret whose infrastructure eats up valuable cargo bay real estate. The turret should be remotely controlled by any of the three co-pilot seats to clear up space for the cargo bay and the turret ought to be placed further back to better cover the vulnerable 6 o'clock and cargo ramp, like the Corsair's proposal. The Retaliator is a massive multi-crew missile ship that would benefit from one of the few currently semi-functioning co-pilot controls, Missile Operator Mode. Ironically, it lacks any co-pilot seat at all. The Retaliator deserves a co-pilot space to offload valuable and very critical missile operations to a dedicated co-pilot managing missile operator mode. The Gladiator, a dedicated missile and torpedo fighter, would clearly benefit too. The two starter ships, the Mustang and Aurora, don't allow new players to pick up stranded friends. The Mustang looks like it has a jump seat. There's space in there for one in the cockpit. Why can't we just have a jump seat? The Mercury Star Runner presents an obnoxiously long and intrusive pathway from the entrance to the cockpit. So does the Spirit. A ladder and door entrance next to the cockpit, seen on most current multi-crew aircraft today, is all that's necessary. Why can't we have that?
I've picked on the Corsair here, partially to process my own confusion. The internet seemed to love it, but I've always struggled to figure out why I didn't. To CIG's credit, they've done revisions of ships in need of help before, and the Corsair's fixes are genuinely simple. But the Corsair isn't the only one with major design flaws that significantly impact gameplay. It's not the only one with unrealized co-pilot spaces or awkward equipment packages. There are plenty of other gold standard passes to make, some of them on existing gold standard ships. Good mechanical ship design is the most important element in Star Citizen. These spaceships are our primary interactive entertainment medium. These ships require real-life money or significant time investments to obtain. If these ships' mechanical designs don't sufficiently serve their intended roles, then players aren't effective. Players struggling to be effective or equipped with subpar tools aren't entertained players. I'm not critiquing because I think all spaceship design should follow my specific interpretation of good design. I'm critiquing because these ships are our primary content to consume in Star Citizen. I'm critiquing because I need effective and entertaining mechanical ship design for my own enjoyment. I need effective and entertaining mechanical ship design so I may introduce, entertain, and ultimately sell my friends Star Citizen. If these fixes and investments and feature sets are forthcoming, Tell us, show us, sell us. Server infrastructure is very exciting, but I've always thought Stanton was big enough for now. Alpha 3.23 is exciting, but it's not exciting enough that I can confidently invite friends to man poorly placed turrets, sit in unrealized functionless co-pilot spaces, or troubleshoot awkward landing problems. Yeah, you see this big box? I pulled it out of the wall, and I want to take it with me, but there's there's no way it's fitting through this little hatch. And there's no... Which is kind of dumb, because what you're supposed to be able to do pretty soon is, you know, like put in new components and new housings or whatever. Not able to. Cooler, not able to. But, hey... Size 2, quantum drive, we're able to, but we're not able to take it out. Um, I'm not so sure, I think these two little things are supposed to open, but uh, they're not available in-game yet, so I don't know how right now we can take these, uh, oh, 